So we're here for uh, week two of Zero to Hero. Unfortunately, last week um, I blue screened, and so it was unfortunate. But we'll put this up on YouTube. Anyway, uh, here with Edwin Budding. I don't even know what main you are, but I guess we're going with Marth for now. <clears throat> oh. That's okay. I'll go with Edwin Budding. Alrighty. Um, so I went over your <laughs> matches last time. Ew, I'm already ahead of the game. And notice some things. I mean, you already mentioned it a little bit, but like there are a lot of other things that I found to be pretty questionable, aside from the fact that you should be prepared for lasers no matter what, and you shouldn't be gimmicking your opponent based on whether or not yeah. they're going to use lasers. So not really a good enough excuse in my book. No, it's a, it's a pretty terrible excuse, actually. Um, so, well, Skype is using 65% of my CPU for some whatever reason. Is that normal? I have no idea. Alrighty. <clears throat> so last week, uh, or two weeks ago, was it three weeks ago? So I'm around that ballpark. Uh, we talked about making better move movement selections, not selling, and going for big wins. So yeah, I don't know if you remember too much from what we talked about last time. I remember or not giving away free hits and making better movement decisions or trying to be more deliberate and mindful of the opponent. Okay, so that's pretty good. I think those are like some of the trends that um, I noticed you frankly weren't doing for a lot of uh, last week's matches. I'm not going to put you on blast though, like overly no, on blast. No, it's okay. No, you should put me for that Falco match. I, I, it just kind of sucks that that Falco match is probably the most, uh, is the biggest one because in that match, I, I think Scar mentioned once about like when you start losing in melee or you find a problem you can't encounter, you end up doing the same thing over and over again. It's, it's kind of like when you're arguing but you just end up shouting the same thing over and over again and no one is listening to you or that you just look stupid in a debate. That's kind of what happened to me that match. Hmm. Well, that makes sense. Um, so, so I guess like some of my, I don't know if you can see my, I guess you can see my screen, there's a red outline. So I think some of the observations I made first is like making better movement selection and then like knowing why when you're no good, AKA like stop autopiloting. But I guess more to that, um, of course I could tell you to stop autopiloting and that probably wouldn't help you. And then examining like why we're no good like okay like what what's the rationale like why are we good sometimes and not good other times when it seems like the situations are very similar and lastly i want to like kind of go over like reading routes because i feel like that's something that you need to learn as marth and just on how his toolkit works and i'll explain more of that in a bit and so hopefully you can see my little like drawings can you yeah i can see it okay so like I feel like a lot of instances, like if we assume our opponent's dumb, like they're gonna pick the most direct path to us. Like they're just gonna run into us with no resolve, remorse, or whatsoever. And you're naturally gonna be like, okay, he's running at me, so I'm gonna throw a hitbox here and it's gonna hit him, and then I'm gonna combo him. Usually that's not the case though. And so for a lot of your matches, like and what I've noticed is a theme where you're just assuming that like that somehow you and your opponent are always going to meet right in the middle like they're just going to be dumb enough to like just run into everything that you throw at them in between is the is the common theme that i noticed of course you know if you throw a hitbox here and you're in lag then they can just go around you and then it's not really good times for edwin budding um so we have to realize like when when you're clearly no good or you're throwing wasteful hitboxes so like here for example like a lot of people will just mindlessly throw a jump forward air and while that seems like it's okay because you didn't get hit like you lose opportunity on everything else you could have covered because you're in lag like so for example if you go here to throw fair and your opponent does not jump in then your opponent wins in every other way they can outmaneuver you whereas opposed to like you can kind of wait and see what they do, and if they jump up, because they know you're going to go this way, 
then you have other options to cover them. But once you're committed to that force fair, you're pretty much done in covering anything else. Um, but um, let's see. So one example, um, so this is like, I guess going back to the concept of turnovers that you mentioned. Um, so like what I think is a big thing to think about is like setting up options and decision trees for when your opponent is very limited like in a sense like they're in role animation let's say they got the most extreme example i could think of is like you broke their shield and you had like a full four seconds with them or they throw a falcon punch but and like they're in stun of some sort and you can just grab them or whatever but you have to also realize like what do you do when like they're semi-limited in that they can still move or like they're no longer in lag so like in most situations, you want to ask yourself, like, if I'm if I'm guaranteed to punish like them, um, like, what can I do? Like, and that's like the thing that most people will think about, right? Like, if Fox is like ten percent on FD and they whiff something, then you're gonna go for a grab, like nine times out of ten. But if you're late, like, what are you gonna do? Like, and they can move around, and that's like the big thing that is really important to learn because in melee there's mistakes and there's times where you're not going to be able to get the punish so like i'm pretty sure you remember this one like so if falco's in lag like given the game state here what would you want to do falco's doing an up smash here uh wave dash out shield grab okay now clearly you're not in position and falco's recovered falco's not in a as laggy state as in that he has options like would you still want to go for a grab here? No, because he could probably just shine me. But chances are I probably grabbed anyway because I was getting annoyed and just playing stubborn. Yeah, you spot dodge and got shined and you died. Oh, no. Well, okay, so so here, like, this is the example we go to, right? Like, they're going from limited to, like, semi-limited, right? Like, as in they can't move around, their hitboxes aren't very strong because they're not dash dancing. <clears throat> so there's one rule to this like I'm not saying never grab like because like there's so many contexts here that apply to make the decision here like so me telling you to never grab here would probably not be the best decision or like the best way to teach you but I want you to think about like this is like what are they very likely going to do given the context you've built with them now that they have options or somewhat of a rock paper scissors scenario with them so like run th if you're in Falco shoes right like what would you think what would you want to avoid like now that you're in lag and you're in trouble I would want to avoid getting grab and getting down throw down tilted or down throw jab or any or having the situation completely flipped on me all right so given that what would be the likely scenarios that you would pick as uh, probably spot dodge or runaway laser or dash away laser Okay, so knowing that, like, now reverting this to Marth and understanding, like, what Falco's probably thinking, like, what would you do in light of the fact that they're very likely to do spot dot shine? Well, if they spot dot shine, I could just grab them after, I could grab them after the spot dodge, throw out, throw out a hitbox, to, or throw out a hitbox, like, Nair that would cover spot dodge and whatever they do afterwards. Or if I notice that they're running away and lasering what, when I'm cornered, I could try. I could see whether the space I have between them while they're dashing away is enough where I can clip them at the apex of their jump. Okay. So yeah, I mean, so yeah, that, that's like the kind of situations we have to realize, and that's the the source of many turnovers, especially for newer players. That like most newer players, like they frankly will only, only, only like typically most Reddit people. Are you there? Yeah, I, you you kind of broke up for a second. Can you 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 I let you left off at most newer players will. Most newer players will um. Will only, like for whatever reason, you look at analysis. Oh God, did I just? I just closed the window. Might be. You're gonna see secret Illuminati stuff. Not really. It's okay, I don't really... And... It, I mean, what you're saying, the, like, sort of cover one versus cover two, that's a... that's a good way of putting... that's a good way of putting it. I'm trying to... I think I... It, I mean, I think I mentioned this to you last lesson, but... I... I sort of have this very, uh... 
I think when when you're talking about turnovers, when you're talking about cover one versus cover two, I think so much of my game plan, like in general against opponents, but especially against Falco, is by a is based on cover one, and I never really I never really have a backup plan for what to do. It's just kind of like oh you know if I'm guaranteed to get a grab off a tech chase or a knockdown situation, I'll do it. Versus if the Falco gets away, I don't really have another another plan outside of hoping that they mess up and I can turn and I can notice them turning the ball over if that makes any sense yeah I mean so like it's important because like like a lot of opportunities especially when you play neutral against really good players like if you don't have an option to like you're going to lose really bad because they're not they're very rarely going to give you option one or cover one but you will very often get covered two in minor wins like we've kind of talked about this theme last time, and so you have to begin to think about like, like you can't just run like if Falco throws a bat laser and you're half a screen away, you can't just run up to them and expect that something's just gonna hit them. Like Falco's too fast of a character to let you just run at them. And so you have to think like, well, they're in panic mode where they're trying to scramble for like their positioning. Like you have to think about what they're wanting to do, and that's kind of like how you read movement. And that's like kind of like how the analogy of like playing chess versus checkers comes into play because you're not going for like the king here, but you're working your play to get the checkmate. Um, but so so we go here, right? And you know, at the end of the day, like even if you wait it out, sometimes they can do a very janky thing. Like they can just jump and dare you, or they or can, forward smash or something. Yeah. So like you have to like you have to be very observant and this is where you have to be really proactive and this is where like the next step into like not being as autopilot -y is that when you come into these situations that are very not guaranteed but but at the same time you can kind of limit the amount of options they have you have to be paying attention to these situations very often like what type of player what will they do and why it's like are they going to roll like why are they going to roll are they scared are they, is the risk reward like a certain way are they going to spot dodge are they going to shine are they going to attack and like you could like this is like a very obvious scenario like he threw a really bad aerial and or up smashing and lag and that's like a very extreme example but you can see this subtly come up where like if you run up to them and pause like are they are they do they just naturally roll or like if you tech chase them and you're late like what do they like to do and like you need to be very keen and aware because the mindset that they hold in one situation oftentimes will carry over to another like if i play tof for example, and like I run at him, he's mostly gonna throw a hitbox at me. Like he really likes the shield. And likewise, if I run up to him and I miss a tech chase, he's gonna sh he's gonna dare out a shield and try to shine me and gimmick me. And I have to realize like that's like the likely option he's gonna pick unless he adapts. So those are like the kind of things that you want to be very proactive of. It's not even in just like defensive situations, but let's say like in the case of Falco once again, like they throw a very bad laser and they have to panic. But, like, you're not close enough that you can just get a free grab. Like, the situation will come up very similarly where they will come up with very similar responses. Does that make sense? No, it does. You're you're kind of making me rethink my whole, uh, the, the way I approach Falco. Like, it, it's what you're saying about sort of being mindful about them, understanding not just the cover two situations, but also, like, paying attention to their responses. Yeah. And then there's cover three, which we won't even go Not into. Many. I think weaknesses where I'm more comfortable back to the stage and what'd you say? Oh no, go ahead. No, I, I didn't. You said and there's cover three, which we won't go oh, into, or no. something. There's cover three, which we won't go into today. Cover three is like Yomi. I guess this is the best way I could put it. It's like what? Yomi layers. Like, so if they're aware of your cover two option, then they'll throw out something really outlandish. And that's like learning how to cover three, which is like basically like if they know that you are aware of what their intent is, they will totally mix up their intent and go for something completely different to counter your counter two. Okay. Yeah. Um, You're saying cover two and cover three, which is make me think football. So, yeah. All right. Um, so here, like, like let's say, like, 
for example, let's say Falco is like a little bit further away, like here, right? How do they interact when you run in and run out is like something you have to pay attention to. And especially with Falco, where you're going to be stuck playing a horizontal game very often. Like the typical Falco game is like, um, let's see. Like if you're running just outside of range where you can do anything to their lasers, like the temptation of most players is to just run in and dash attack. And Falcos are very keenly aware that that's what a lot of people like to do because lasers are very frustrating. Um, so the point being here is that like in horizontal situations with Falcon in particular, I'll highlight them in video, like um, after they throw out their hitbox and you can move, like how are they going to respond to their movement is like a big, very big question you need to ask yourself when you play against Falco. Because if you run in, but they're always running away, then you just don't throw out that hitbox. And then eventually they get cornered. Laser is 2%. Uh, you can potentially kill them off an opening. Uh, risk reward, give them the 2%. It doesn't really matter that much. Although it's very frustrating. Um, so being very observant, um, I'll show this. This is really hard to kind of explain just pictured. I, I think I need video. Um, let's see. So, and then the last thing I like really want to go into before we kind of like look over your matches is like reading routes. And like I mentioned before in this picture here, um, a dumb player, player is going to be very obvious in the routes they take. Like a very, if you just play like your little sister, for example, they will just probably just run at you or be very obvious in running away, right? But once again, kind of think of it this way, right? In this situation, the Falco knows that you can go up and jump, right? And if you're the Falco mm -hmm. player, like, why would you want to interact in this space? Like, why would you even bother going here, right? Right. And it's pretty well established that you can cover here, so there's very little point to covering here. So that's, like, the very basic, um, the very kind of basic approach to, like, a lot of... A lot of marts so like if you jump up here realize that you've already established that you can cover this space and that you don't need to do anything so if you just jump and don't fear you already threatened falco enough to eliminate their double jump nine times out of ten where they're gonna jump up right but if you don't commit to fear here then you're like aha like you have a bigger win here because now he jumped and his route is limited and now you're like okay i just have to like time my up air to beat it and that's a big win See how that's explored? It's like kind of like chess. Like step one is here, right? Like I can go here and try to take that spot and throw a fair, but that's going to put me in lag. But by me jumping up and threatening, if I could see steps ahead here, then I know that the Falco, if they're smart and they just don't want to give free hits, they're going to jump up here. And so you can kind of visualize right here saying like, you know what? I already covered this space here and I know that he has to jump. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to jump once here, bait, make him go up and then go underneath him and shark him. And then you win the neutral there. So it's like reading a step ahead. Yeah. So like in this example, right? You're the Falco, right? And he's poking at you. Now you can throw the down tilt again, but very likely if the Falco is smart, he's just not gonna let you keep poking his shield, right? So the down tilt here is not as meaningful. It's not gonna add damage to you because they're gonna try to figure out a way. So if you're in the Falco shoes, like what do you think the Falco wants to do here? Um, are you very... saying if I was, are you saying if I was PJ in this situation? Yeah. Uh, if I had to guess what he'd do, he'd probably roll behind me and shine, or roll behind spot dot shine, or even maybe even light shield and go to ledge. Or laser. or he could jump too, right? Right. Yeah. Jump. So ledge. see how like your second down tilt's kind of pointless here then in that in this spot. Like if you down tilt once, you get him to shield then like your second down tilt is very vulnerable because it's not gonna cut co you're covering this spot here but like what's the route they're very likely gonna take it's either jump here or go behind and roll and if you down tilt again you're gonna get shined okay so like i see what you mean so, and that's very important with marth is knowing when to not throw hit boxes and to read what their like, plan of action is to get out of spots because marth is very good at threatening without throwing hit boxes and that's why Marth can just run across stage and like just cause people to run away because it's like so scary to interact with just what just joining hitboxes. I guess here's another example. And this is your opponent this time attacking you. Your opponent just full hopped here, right? Mm -hmm. What's their likely route? Like if they can react to you. 
What do you mean? Like, so Falco just jumped, and you just got where? Like, what's Falco really looking for here from you? Is he gonna go to that platform to the right? Um, he just jumped straight up. Oh. Um, and he just used one jump. If if I get up, he'll probably just jump again and go to top platform. And if you throw out certain things, he's gonna hit you straight up with a dare. Right. All right. So in this spot, you just neared for whatever reason, and then you got dared. Where the uh, route doesn't make sense. Wait. Well, sorry. Can can you? So in this situation, I got up from legend neared. Yeah, and then he just dared you right after. Okay. Like you, you were all the way down here. You went here. And you neared, and Falco was still up here, and then he immediately dared you. So maybe I thought he was gonna like drift down, or so, so, I, I have no idea why. I, I mean, so like, I, I mean, needless to say, a lot of these spots, you're just kind of hoping that he just runs into you. But once again, we have to go back to the point that you have to give your opponent some credit. Like they're not dumb. Like, like every one of these examples where you you interact with Marth, like you're kind of hoping that they just run into you. Like, when you throw a fair here, you're just hoping, oh, I hope he just jumps into me. Like, so the same principles apply in different situations, and that's what I'm trying to iterate, is that you have to think about the routes they're gonna take and assume that they're gonna think a certain way. And the best way you can think about that is just think like, okay, if I'm in their shoes, like, what are they looking for? And chances are, like, what they're looking for and what you think they're looking for is probably going to be, like, 80% correct. And then from that, you can make a pretty good assessment of, like, okay, like, knowing this is what they're looking for, like, how do I create a good game plan around it? All right. Yeah. So that's, like, the big thing. So here, um, so we can kind of go, we can go to the match. Uh, let's see. Let me change that. I feel like... I feel like when I'm watching this match, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna be like talking to my parents about a bad grade I got like seven years ago or something. Yeah, that oh, was like no. a week ago. All right, so. Oh, okay. Sorry. One last thing. So other observations I just kind of generally notice, and I'll point, I point, I'll point them out to you. Is uh, there? I think. Aside from that, I don't really honestly think that turnovers were necessarily your problem. Um, I think movement was a big issue, and you gave your opponent a lot of free hits just because you didn't move correctly, whether this was just tournament winnering, dashing the wrong way, jumping awkwardly, standing still when you were probably meaning to dash. Um, even on your follow-ups, like doing a random move instead of what I hope I thought your original intent was, like ended your combos early and ended up getting you killed. So like, I think honestly, like even if your movement just improved and it was cleaner, like I think you probably could have brought these games into it within like one stock or possibly even one in. So that's probably the biggest thing I noticed. Uh, if I can defend myself, I had walked... Uh, um, plus. So I was getting annoyed at myself that I, I couldn't even dash forward correctly and I was jumping a lot. So in my defense, I, I don't think this is indicative of, uh, I don't think the movement stuff is indicative of long-term problems, but I can definitely see why it would stand out more than anything else Yeah. and why that, can, that only augments the other issues of bad route prediction and sort of decision making and that kind of stuff. Yeah, so that's fine. We'll see more footage, and I'll probably uh, normalize. Um, I saw a lot of Hail Marys where uh, where I just felt like you threw moves and kind of was in the mindset of, well, I'm so far behind that maybe this will work, and if it does, maybe something will happen. Um, especially with a lot of the random forward smashes, even when your opponent was like at like 30%, like even if you got that forward smash, it, would have probably not done much. Um, so, anyway. Let's see. Going back to the match. This will be on YouTube. Yeah. Just in, in just for a rewatch, if, 
if I forget how to fight Falco or something. Okay, awesome. Alright, so going here. Alright, so I guess if we were to like look at like Falco 101, right? The way I pay attention is here, right? Like I make observations of every any kind of thing, and I go like, okay, like what do you like to do? Okay, so like point of interest one, Falco stop dash dancing is not lasering, right? Like what was he looking for here? So he dashes away. Okay, that tells me something. Okay, what does he do after that laser? That's another question I'm wondering. Okay, like at that distance. All right, so he's scared that I'm gonna go in, so kind of waits it out so like everything that like every inflection point of Falco like I'm always making observations so um, let's see don't know where that back what that back air was but I'm gonna assume that you made a mistake there that fair is fine all right you're doing okay is there any way you can change your is there any way you can change your mic it might be my internet connection. Let's see. Hi, 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 hi. Tafo, is there any way you could change your? Is there any way you could change your mic? I haven't been. The last like twenty seconds of what you're saying have just been blurred. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, just say something really slowly again. Hi. Hello? Actually, let's see. Turn off your video. Hello? Let, let me check. Turn What's off your, uh, go ahead and turn off your video. Okay, how do I, how do I do that again? Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering real quick. So like, what's your internet connection like at home? Cause it seems like the connection between us is slow. I use just generic Wi-Fi. Okay, that might be the reason. Yeah. I mean, uh, does it have good download upload? Because I, mean, I would use a, I would use a generally pretty generally. Try turning off my cam if I can figure out that. Do you have any idea or no? Um, so there's a so if we're gonna turn off your uh, video, uh, there's a turn on there's a video camera icon on the bottom. Oh right right. And then okay. just click that once. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sorry. My bad. I, I was scared it would turn a video or something. It might be because we're doing share screen, and I guess it's a lot more demanding than normal connections. All right. Is that better? Can you hear me? Okay. Much better now. All right, it was probably our internet connection. All right, let's see. So going, sorry about that. We'll start over. Uh, let's see. So a lot of Falco is like, um, I, I view like the distances where I want to fight Falco to be so much similar as Sheik and Marth, where I think Marth has a little bit more leeway because his hitbox, his hitboxes are a little bit farther reaching. I always go and like look at like okay when he's moving around like what does he want to do what is he looking for and i always ask myself a lot of questions so even like here like in the beginning he goes like this and this is like a point of contention because it's right outside your fear range and i ask myself okay like given this range is he waiting for like i ask myself a lot of questions like is he wanting me to go in is he baiting me is he running away is he trying to attack me and that's like a question you're gonna have to ask yourself a lot Okay, so you got you cornered. Okay. Um, earned it. I wouldn't say this is too tragic. Don't blame that fair. Alright, so not too bad. You missed a grab. Alright, down tilt one. You gotta be aware here that he can crouch cancel, so like you should immediately bail this. Nothing you can do there, um, but let's see. This is the example where, you know, we presented earlier. You're a little bit slow here. 
And for whatever reason, yeah. So that's how you got punished. You were a little bit slow. And that's where, like, yeah, you're pretty late there. And that's what ended up happening. Anyway, so we already got over that example, so I'm not going to talk about it. I'll keep going. So first stock, um, I guess, like, in my head, um, what I would have mentally noted is that, okay, like, he knows that based on our interactions that you are playing very defensive, so he's going to overshoot you a lot. And that's one thing I would make notice of because the first, like, raw neutral interaction we had where he first opened you up was because he overshot you. So, like, that's, like, something I immediately put in the back of my head. Like, okay, this Falco, like, he's going to laser a few times, but he's going to look for me to roll backwards. Like, how do I stop that? So the next time he goes for an overshoot, then I'm going to throw an error in place. Or I'm going to notice where he's going to land and dash dance grab that part those particular spots if he tries to go for those spots. But it seems like he has an idea that you are playing a little bit scared or defensively, and he's overshooting. So that's like the first thing I'd be thinking of on the cloud for like four seconds. It's like, why did I get hit? I, oh yeah, he overshot me, so I gotta be aware that he's looking to overshoot my retreats. All right. All right. Okay, I see what you mean. All right. All right, should be a good hit. Ah, oh, you should have grabbed, but you end up getting that. And I get crouch cancel up. Smashed. All right. So let's see. So one thing we have to realize here is that, okay, so this was good. That would have been a grab. Um, I think he should have crouch canceled that. And I think maybe the, I think the reason I didn't grab is maybe, I think I was scared of getting spot dodged or something, but I think I would have, I don't think that was an actual, like, I'm pretty sure the grab was confirmed. Yeah, it was. Um, so here you could have uh, crouch canceled and here, like, don't know why you go for a shield grab. Got to give your opponent some credit. All right, so good. I don't really blame that dash attack. All right, so you got away with the crotch cancel. Oh, you got, okay. So once again, like, you're just like a little late on things, so. Like he did that, right? He did that dare and you're thinking, oh, hey, I can grab him. But it goes back to the example, uh, the analogy we had, like, yeah, you could have gone him if you're dashing the right way, but here you are you can see why you're clearly going to be late on a grab, right? Mm -hmm. so, I'm dashing too far away. Yeah, and clearly, like, you're very fortunate there that he did not dare in place, because that would have led to a lot of damage. So here, do you see how you're kind of like just hoping that he runs into you? Yeah, and he over he caught my wave dash back also. Yeah. So there, I mean, if you want a solution to that, then you can fair in place, and you should be able to beat it if you're seeing an overshoot. Right. But because you crouch, it lets yourself to be pretty vulnerable. Can you go back to that initial dare where he ca he hits me with the dare like, like in the middle of the stage? There. Okay, so I right, I, I, I drifted forward when I tried to aerial him. Okay. So here you just were out of out of position. So like, I mean, you could throw on a throw out the fair right away. I mean, that could have been bail out, but because you were just too close to him and that was like misspacing. Um, you got caught. Do you think I should have just kept grounded instead and like dash danced or something to bait out the aerial? Um, so, I mean, everything kind of, it depends. So let me look here and see. So here, um, so this is actually a really shitty spot for Falgo. And the reason is, is that you can threaten him if he, las if he lasers and he's not going to He's not psychotic enough to laser here unless he's 100% confident that you're going to run away. So this is kind of like a scramble zone for you. And a lot of Falcos, just from game 
they will like to back air or aerial a lot in this situation or try to get the hell out. And this is a situation where, like, you kind of wonder, have to ask yourself, like, what are they going to do in this situation? Because you can dash dance away, but they roll away, and then they get access to laser again at the expense of a little bit of stage control. So ultimately, it depends. So, like, right here in this prime spot where he lands and you're in good position to cover a few lasers, like, you have to pay attention to what he likes to do here. And in this case... It's another experiment where I'm like, okay, like he likes to just throw, go ahead and throw an aerial here. Next time, I'm going to go for a dash dance grab. And it's a mix-up here because if you dash dance here and he decides to say, like, hey, he dash dances every time, then he can throw a laser out and stop your dash dance. And then now you're in trouble. Unless you Can't, you he, can't he dash? And if I dash dance, wasn't he just catching me with overshot aerials earlier or... Yeah, but he doesn't have a dash here. Oh, right, right. So there's a difference between him running at you and him not having dash. So in this spot, it's like, okay, like he wants to attack, fight me, then here, like, I'm not committing to a jump. Actually, there is actually a very little reason for you to commit to a jump in the first place there. Oh, that was so scary. Why would you, why would you fair there? I was trying to like get some silly fair grab down throw. See? You're hoping that your opponent is stupid. <laughs> yeah. And I got you probably killed here. You have no idea how tight I was right there. I was so mad. I was like, why won't this Falco just go into my and fall into Mart's loving arms? I was getting so tilted around here. Alright. How did I even get grabbed there? It was literally on top platform. Because you lasered and then you shielded in front of him. Alright, so it's, that's fine. What's not fine is... I mean, so one thing that I reviewed from last time. So you're here. Good spot for you, right? And you, you, you absolutely hate laser. So, I mean, keep in mind. Uh, don't want to be going this way if you want to fight lasers, right? Right. So you look at all that space you gave him. Uh. You're hoping for a shield grab. You're hoping for a shield grab again. All right, that's fine. All right, that's good. Ah, uh, now they're up tilt. Oh, now you're late. I tried to time those down tilts to hit him right after the first laser, but I think I ended up just mashing instead of trying to react. Yeah. Alright, here you're starting to pay attention. Alright. Okay, that's good. He threw out. That was kind of a haphazard aerial. Why? 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 No. <laughs> Tapo, I'm getting so, so upset at this point. Both in the video and myself right now. Oh. How did I lose that position? He was literally right at ledge. That's like the worst place for Falco. All right, so once again, you're very, so some, there are some instances, yeah, where he punishes you, but there are some instances where you're very lucky that he did not punish you. Like that Nair, nine times out of 10, if that were like a West Bowls, like you would have gone back here and died. Oh, I was thinking like, yeah. I was and then you, you got, and then you got, and then you got bailed out. Nahima's face, and you somehow got a kill. So that was a huge mistake on his end. All right. So you get a stock. Let's see what happens. All right. Are you done? You have a jump. I know you do. A beat? No. Oh, okay. He didn't. Refresh. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, you also very no. no. Alright, that got you killed, and rightfully so, that was a pretty big mistake. Alright, let's see. You're reflecting, you're mad. I'm trying to think of all the stuff that you told me in the, like, just 
five days ago in this match. I was like, okay, he's gonna overshoot you. Just don't get scared. All right, so, um, so that's so keep in mind that he has had a pattern of jumping to top platform at least like four times at this point, maybe three. So in this like sequence, you've already established that like that fair he's never gonna run into it. And you can use this knowledge to go for his next step, which was to jump. And you may have been able to cut, catch him with an up air. Wait, can you go back to that fair position again for a moment? Like, that's the that dance still? Yeah. So, like, here, like, I would jump in a way that he can't hit me directly. Like, here, right? That fair isn't going to do me no good. Because I'm in because lag. You've been going to top platform. Like, the I, whole game. look at me now. Like, I'm in lag. And there's no way I can cover. Like shark him now because it's gonna be too late and then here you're kind of just hoping that he runs into this like you're hoping that he just falls into your laps here and then you get punished for like 50 ish oh no that was a grab that was a grab yeah all right Okay, that was good. You were, you made him second think his approach, and you're like slowing it down. Okay. All right, that was good. You waited him out, and you're able to capitalize on him, as opposed to just kind of running at him. Okay. Oh, you had the idea. So in this case, like I'm not saying to never attack, but like. You don't have to preemptively show a hitbox there. It will probably do you no good. So like here, I'll be waiting, 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 and then I see him go into me, and then I'm gonna be preparing an up tilt or up air. But rather than preemptively throw it and say like I hope you run into this, I'm going like okay, if you come here, then I have this ready for you. Is the way I would think about those situations. Wait, didn't you say earlier that there would be no reason for Falco to come down from that situation with the random aerial? Or is just doing that as a minute from going to top platform? That actually should have been punished like 9 times out of 10. Like, I would have, I'm pretty sure most Marts would have found a way to dash in, grab it. Like, in those, it very rarely, like, you had the position to shield it too. Like, worst comes to worst for you, in your perspective, like, I don't know why you didn't shield. I think I assumed, rather than being mindful and reacting, I probably just assumed he was going to top platform and then was caught by surprise. Okay. So, I mean, there's always this. Like, you want to look at the routes they can go, but you always want to be reactive and, like, give yourself general reactive windows. But in that case, like, I don't like those aerials, and, like, the main reason is because, like, those are so vulnerable to dash dance grab that, like, m like Falcos that do that very often tend to, like, have very tend to not do very well consistently because of how volatile that approach is. Unless they have like a god read on like the other player. Alright, I like that you waited and you didn't immediately go in despite the fact that you, I, I assume you messed up your dash. I did. I was waiting for him to do something out of shield like roll. All right. So you, the reason why you're doing a lot better, and it might be because like you're in last stock, and you're like, oh shit, like I might lose, is because like you're a lot more, um, you're a lot more aware of making him threatening and making them do the first play. Oh no, this is like <laughs> you see those two shield guys. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but. So overall, like, we want to kind of get out of our mindset, like, I hope this works, to, like, okay, let's see, like, what's going on here. Mindfulness is, like, always what I'm going to be emphasizing. All right, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back into, like, one speed, and maybe I'll show some interesting spots. Okay. All right. I'm trying to think about mindfulness during the during my last game I was like okay don't get, don't get free hits don't don't get scared try to notice where he's going or whatever and you're um, doing better in that stock all right so you end up getting giving him free hits 
Right. I actually don't know why I'm at this stage. I actually, I like battlefields more. So I'm just kind of curious what this uh, floor smash was. You're clearly late. Uh, wait. Can can you go back like two seconds? Or I'm trying to remember what I w might have been thinking. I don't think I would have intentionally tried to forward smash him at 15. I think maybe I was trying to like. Oh no, I think I I think I was just No wait no 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 I think I think maybe I was trying to like short hop eight away fair or something and then I just but I missed the jump input and just forward smashed. That I think that's why I shook my head. Alright. So like that's why that dare is like overall just like really awful because like very commonly like Marth Sheik and like anyone with a decent dash dance can like just grab Falco off those dares. Like, I eat those dares up. No, 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 no. But, um, so, I mean, this turnover happened because you were late on a tech chase. So. Right, yeah, I just walked forward instead of dashing. I don't know if you saw me nod my, or shake yeah. my head there, but I was so annoyed. All right, that. but you also have to realize that when you turn the ball over, like, you can't get mad and get complacent. So, like, here, like, Unfortunately, you know you're no good. They're in prime position, and I'm pretty sure if you're looking at this now, you obviously know that that fair that you're throwing out here is clearly not going to work. Yeah, it's like it's like turning the ball over, and the the opponent has an open and one, but like after they've shot the ball, you just like foul them anyways yeah. and give them another free throw. Yeah. So I think you like lost sense of like what was going on for like the rest of the stock after you missed that tech chase. There's mistake one, and then you panicked, and then you didn't pay attention to like the Falco here, like. Yeah, he just read my he just read my jump early. Yeah, and then you could have reacted up beat right away if he was going to go with that, which is not ideal, but it would have prevented you from a sure death. See, again, I'm trying to challenge him on that right platform when he's just going up to the top. I'm missing that fair every time and getting punished for it. Yeah. So, so like, see, like, like Amarth for this, like, for example, to just give you contrast, like, if if that were Mewtwo King or PP, that would, this would be a kill for Amarth. They would just grab up, throw dare. Or, like... They would just combo and kill. Like, maybe not unfound, but it would be a ludicrous amount of damage. Because that's a big mistake for Falco to do. Alright. Get caught on that platform trying to play footsies. Um... You didn't give... Oh, no. You were hoping that he was just magically going to run into things. Yeah, again. <laughs> I don't know if you saw me turning around over and over again. I was trying to dash dance. Oh, he's, he's all. Yeah. So a lot of them just like kind of flubs. See, like you. That's why those aerials are so bad. Like, and then you missed the follow up there. So that's like another like forty, fifty damage you probably could have gone. I mean, if you're gonna go that hard, uh, keep in mind they're at seventy five, and I noticed that you were doing that a lot. Like, why not just wave dash to the middle of the platform and up tilt? Right. Okay, you're just a little late. I'm pretty sure you could have grabbed that because you're underneath Falco when he back when he back aired. So I don't know, just a lot of mispunishes here. I noticed that for probably prevented you from, you know, doing more. All right. Like that. I like that a lot. I like that you didn't challenge him. Don't know what you were playing on there. Uh, my back was turned by accident. And I, th I, th I think that's where I think maybe our kind of like bear on the platform yeah. or something. And then here you're like really late. Like why would you go all the way down there and out of position? And that gets you into a lot of trouble. So. Hey, what you said about mindfulness. I'm not actually reacting to his DI, I'm just hoping, oh, maybe if he goes this way I can swat him with a falling down fair. Yeah. That's fair. No pun intended. <laughs> oh my god. So that's fine. Like, I think one thing you're punishing a lot is, uh, 
is his uh, falling off platform aerial. Alright, that's good. You got the kill. Alright. Alright, not bad. Okay, let's see. Tournament winner one gets punished. Alright, that's fine. That's a all right, recovery. It was a little scary. Tournament winner number two. I love how he was trying to wave land away, but I still grabbed anyway because I just assumed that I would get the grab. I was a little late there. Yeah. So once again, a little late, missed the punish. And overall, you're like averaging like 15% of punish, and that actually got you killed. So, I mean, that's like probably the big thing. Like, the turnover thing, I think, like, it's not mystifying, like, nebulous in the sense of like why it's happening. It's just that you're late on a lot of these punishes. And that was another like juicy grab opportunity that you just kind of flubbed. Yeah, I missed the dash or smash turn backwards. Yeah. God, I played so bad this set. You're, this is like, but the thing is, like, even being technically off, that's not excusing, like, like that. That's no excuse for not being mindful and just throwing out random yeah. moves. So even here, like, if we're gonna be better on the cleanup, all right. So here, right, like, if I were in your shoes here, like, as soon as I see that, I'm prepping my position, like, and so I'm gonna be wave dashing forward, most likely. But like, look at how you're stuck here, and like there's like a full like half a second window where you're not prepped or in the right position so like instead of being here where you can be like oh, okay like if he di's away then i can follow up by doing a wave that like a jumping forward or whatever like you're stuck all the way back here where it's even like you're going to be pressing a lot of buttons to even cover the right side of the platform yeah i'm not i'm not positioned properly to react and so you miss this punish too so fortunately you don't get turned turned over oh phantom that's fun Like, and then up tilt, don't know. Yeah, that was a lazy, that's a lazy punish for me. Up tilt would have been actually led into. And so here you end up turning the ball over because uh, for whatever reason, you keep trying to down tilt under, which makes sense, but in, but you don't know the actual timing window of like when it actually works for a uh, down tilt to be double laser. So I think that's like one thing you can like learn. Oh no. I could also up be out of shield after the first laser. Yeah. I think. But yeah. I guess that's something for me to figure out. Yeah. But you want to learn the timing. And so here you get beat because, uh, why do you get beat? Let's see. It's not bad. No wait, no, that wasn't the moment you got beat. Let's see. All right, so this is not bad. Honestly, I think you could have reacted by doing a uh, wave dash forward smash tipper. I wonder if wave, da wave dash back and reacting would have been better. Yeah, let's see. Let me see what you ended up doing. I don't know why I just stood there. I assumed he would go to ledge. Um, I would have just up tilted in that case. Or like the first jab's okay if you want to cover the straight, and but then you could have time to up tilt. Yeah, you could have up tilted. So overall, like I don't. I mean, it just seems like. I mean, the turnovers, like I think, are. I mean, just a symptom mainly of you being late on punishes and not maximizing your punishes. And to be fair, Fountain is not the best stage for punishes for Marth. Even like Mage King doesn't get the greatest punishes on that stage. So. But then even then you had guaranteed follow-ups that you missed so that's like something to like really heavily consider because you don't want to turn a positive situation into a net loss in terms of percentage that'd be disastrous um yeah that won't cut it against falco especially where you like have to where i have to really like i can't afford to be missing that yeah um let's see what else 
and then just like thinking of the game more as like chess is like really important that's like something mango emphasized to me like a really long time ago um let's see oh, i'm in frozen i've been frozen on the the vod that's gonna look really funny anyway um so i mean once again like being able to anticipate like what a stalemate situation is and anticipating what the next steps are so like this is a stalemate situation where a down tilt won't lead into much and then being proactive and thinking like okay what routes are they going to take is going to be one of the most important skills you learn as marth because that's how you're going to be able to read movement and cut people off so i mean classic example you now realize like running up forward air you've already established that you can cover that spot but what are the other spots that falco is going to go to so thinking like the next step like not where they are now but where they're going to be as a result of you controlling certain spots um, and not making assumptions that they're gonna just run into me yeah i mean always be prepared to react to those situations if they do like but at the same time like they're not more often than not they're not gonna run at you unless like they're crazy like if it's west walls and he's fooling around then he's just gonna run at you and like i'll change my game plan but yeah um do you have any like other thoughts or questions I was wondering what you noticed from the the matchup against the Luigi that I sent you against PSI. I mean, it's like the same concept, so like if I were to like draw things, because that video is really hard to see, it's like, let's say like Luigi's here, and you're still here, right? Mm -hmm. Like the thing is, is like, the way that Marth wins is that he doesn't have to throw out moves, right? Because the moment you throw out a fair like this in neutral, which, you know, people do a lot, um, you're super vulnerable as soon as you throw out that move and you miss. Yeah, because with Luigi, yeah, you're right. Luigi can just wave dash underneath me and mess me up. Like, even here, like, let's say Luigi's here and you just throw out a down tilt out of the blue, you are super vulnerable to Luigi. So the whole, like, point being is that you always want to pay attention to, like, where Luigi is. Like, let's say you're here, right? And Luigi's up here, right? Like, a lot of the game plan against, like, Luigi and these floaties, especially as Marth, is just to babysit. And if you find them in a spot where, like, they can't avoid it, then you throw out your hitbox. But until, like, if you're in a situation where you can't immediately hit him, unless they're dumb, and they just walk into your hitboxes, chances are you're going to whiff, and you're going to get punished very hard. Like, being able to, like, hold your hitbox is, like, the most important thing against, like, floaties. Let's see if I have like another like position. There's a Tafo. There's actually one Marth that I I actually I used to watch that played the Falco matchup a lot. Uh, do you know Do you know Dave or Zoso? I do. So before before he stopped playing, there are a few sets that I'd always watch of him against Falco. And I, but but the main thing I get while watching Marts play. Like better Marts play like approach Falco is how hard they how hard they hit him or how hard they gimp them. I'm I'm still not really clear on like the concepts you're explaining to me. I'm not I'm not able to see those concepts in other Marth players. So like, what what's an what's an example of like or if you if there's a Marth Falco set for instance. Like that... just like watch how like PP fights like Mango, for example, or like even just like watch pp versus spacey's and look at how he wins the neutral game like i know it's like really cliche to see but like like you can freeze frame the interaction that starts like every time you watch him get a hit like watch him like three to four seconds and watch their interaction where he like fake friends and then he'll take like a lot more space out of his opponent and choke him away without actually committing to anything like he like he'll wait for them to make the first move and then like but not only is he waiting he's cutting him off so like it always goes to the, like this like fundamental example right he jumps in here knowing like the falco's intent like he's not gonna run in so he chokes away the double jump and then kills you for it like if you're here for example he's gonna dash in and then if he sees the falco whiff then he will react to it dash dance and grab it but if he doesn't see the Falco do anything and he sees the Falco running away, then he's going to continue to run, corner them, and then 
And then let's say that, Fal that Marth is here now and Falco is here. This is a good position for him and he forces very favorable positions and then he cashes in for the kill. He's not immediately just going to run in blind and get hit at that point. Let's say he gets the Falco cornered. Like he's going to keep playing position again. Like let's say like in this position Falco panics and tries to jump in there at Marth here. Then he's going to dash dance. But it's because he worked his way into it. So it's so with PP it's... It's basically, or if, if I'm watching a Marth like PP, it's about what, it's not about like watching what hits he throws out or whatever, it's about watching the position, you're telling, you're essentially saying it's about watching the positions he puts himself into to react to whatever his opponent throws out. Yeah, and he'll put himself into very familiar situations that are very highly advantageous and then just take advantage of those spots. Um, Zozo is a little bit of a weird one because like, I know he's really good at power shielding, so he has a different toolkit. Like Falcos are scared to laser against Sozo, if I remember correctly, because he, because he can threaten with his um, power shielding. But Zozo is the type of player that makes really strong raids in neutral, so that's why you're probably more confused watching him, um, because like he's very familiar with people's intent in their movement. So like if Falco throws a laser, then he kind of gets, has a good game sense of like. Oh, is the Falcon going to run away and shoot another laser? Is the Falcon going to go in? And because, he, like, he can read really well. And so that's why his neutral game seems probably really confusing. But to be perfectly fair, like, you, you probably hit a good point. Like, winning against Falco really heavily borderlines on the punish game. And that's why Mutiking can get away with throwing Hail Marys, like throwing this egregious dash attack. And as long as it works like one out of four times, he gets a kill. So it like kind of evens out. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I, it, as unfortunately you can see, that's kind of how I attack Falco. I just wait for them to mess up or until they're in knockdown position. But if it, but if I'm like one second late, it just blows up in my face. Yeah. Like this set. But even then, like look at the way Mutine throws hitboxes. At the very least, like it's a very smart hitbox that will counter good options. Like you're the way that you're dash attacking. You're just kind of hoping that like they run into it. Like that they're just gonna jump into you. But like Mutiking's dash, Mutiking's dash attack will overshoot and catch a retreating like Falco, for example, and it's very intentional in what he's looking for. Because in his head, he's thinking that that Falco is going to run away laser like two times in a row, and he's going to dash attack, overshoot the second laser, and catch him. Your your dash attack is I hope he just runs into it. Yeah. So there's not really much of a, a strong intent, whereas Muti King is like, you know, I've noticed that he like runaway lasers, so I'm gonna mix it up with a dash attack this time. So it's like more like it's more of an educated, it's more of an educated guess that hard counters what he thinks they're gonna do, whereas like with a with like a player like me that just beats up on baddies and it, can't really like you're beating up on players that you're hoping will just go into your space and you can just spam hit boxes is kind of how I view your neutral to be. Yeah, that's that's actually pretty accurate. The JaVel McGee, again. Yeah. But I don't even consider that overwhelming. It just seems like overwhelming in my view is that you are cornering them and you're throwing out a wall of hitboxes that they can't escape from. Here, like they can do whatever they want and you're just kind of hoping that out of the millions of options they have that they're just going to run into yours. See the the walling. See the walling them out in the corner sounds like how how I would want to play. And I guess I'm, I guess I'm not sure how to do that with Marth, or I'm not sure how to do like, like what is a good example of, of being able to do that, without like sacrificing posi positioning or without opening yourself up. Well, I mean the thing here is that in this match, um, you just got hit when you got your opponent into the corner, so. I don't know if there's like any really significant example here. I mean, once again, it kind of comes down to like fundamentals. So like, let's say I'm like Falco, right? In, in this right. spot, like the big thing here I'm looking at is like, what are the ranges and what are they looking for, right? And you know, Marth in this digital situation, like if he throws a down tilt again, like I can immediately dare. Or if he runs up, then I could retreating dare. Or if he tries to jump up, then I can box him out with my back back air up there and that's just me playing position because he has no options and that's like a very similar principle it's like not i don't want to make playing in the corner like super complicated you're basically reacting to ranges here 
and if I'm like if I'm Marth here and you're Falco here and you don't have a dash then really you don't have much you can do if you try to jump in at me then I can wave dash back and forward air and beat you out like if you're Falco here and I'm Marth here um, and you try to fight your way out like my hitboxes will beat yours and so I can wall you out and that's like how you kind of play it all right is there any way you could share this uh this powerpoint with me along with the last one I'm just gonna pro I'm probably gonna look at it um, during my lunch break tomorrow again yeah all right thanks so yeah um so yeah hopefully get more matches and once again like like in order to see like big improvements you have to be very I mean I hate to like emphasize and beat a dead horse be very mindful in a sense that like you have to be like actively like trying to improve because if you try to just autopilot everything like it's going to be really hard to see improvement because autopiloting means that you're playing the exact same way that you've always been playing and logically speaking that's not going to lead into improvement unless you play like thousands of hours and subconsciously you're learning no no you're right for for sure i think uh th that's something i could definitely work on sort of maintaining that same kind of focus throughout a match and that's not a john that's 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 a legit like problem i have as a player that i have to work on yeah and you know i'm not saying like so i think a lot of people misconstrue like autopiloting right like i autopilot my wave dash inputs right and that's fine because like i shouldn't have to think well i press jump for this much i have to position my stick for this much and then and then press air dodge right Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying like air dot. I mean autopiloting is the wrting thing, but the reason why like better players can seemingly autopilot in like three stock me like mango doesn't have to think is because he's so familiar with the options and how they play out that he can literally autopilot. So I mean there comes a point where you want right. to be autopilot no, I, I see what you mean. You want to be autopiloting sequences like in chess like you can autopilot certain sequences and you know how they're gonna play out. But we're not at that level yet. So you want to be proactive and in thinking about options all the time and be obsessive over it. So I think those are like my tidbits. Uh, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna probably grab a ton more tape of friendly friendly sessions that I'm gonna be playing over the next two weeks. So if we meet again, I'll have a lot more footage that we can look at as well. Okay, cool. That'd be awesome. All right. Uh, just just FYI, this is gonna until like Christmas time is actually gonna be like super hectic for me. So I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do another episode until like the winter break. But hopefully I'll have much better footage, and hopefully by then I'll actually have a I'll have confirmed flights for I have I'll have a confirmed flight and hotel room for Genesis. Okay. So maybe so maybe we can get a few few games in there or something okay yeah that'd be awesome i'd, I'd love to play you all one right of the uh Go one ahead. of the things that I, i've been trying to look at for for sort of how i approach here in, in terms of decision making is like i i think you've talked before on stream about poker yeah so i played it a lot like casually as a high schooler but i've been sort of reading reading more on poker just as as like competition and like the idea of probability and the idea of like playing the idea of like playing odds and like i, I don't i don't know I, I just saw like a bunch of videos about like playing small ball poker or something and it was basically all about like maximize like like taking slight slight losses to maximize like your wins or whatever yeah so so that's just like one sorry I, i'm probably not making much sense here i mean i know I'm what you're to, like, i know what you're saying but like and I know like like Kiger does this. He does little experiments and takes little damage like to like figure out patterns and that like, he can cash in on later. Um, honestly, I'd be honestly speaking at at this point in time, I think um, you're still discovering what options are and what solutions are what solutions are to options. That I would tend to just focus on that. Okay, sure. Yeah, but I I do know what you're saying though. Um, no, no, no. I, I definitely, no. I, I, th I think you're right. I think I'm. I think I still have a quite a bit more to learn about, like the really my, like the my, 
Like, would you call what the situations we went through micro interactions or not really? I mean, in general, some of them are. Some of them are a little bit more macro based. When we talk about position and route reading, that's definitely more of a macro level play. But, um, but being able to figure out like secondary options, third options, like what can cover multiple options, is still going to be really important for you. Like in certain situations, like if they, you know that they can do three options. Or that they're willing to do like two or three options, like Nair might be the better choice. Where if they want to do two to three other options, like Dash Dance Away might be a better choice. And being able to figure that out and deduce that is going to be really important. So I would focus on that most of most of the time. Okay, awesome, awesome. I'll get you more footage, and if we can't do an episode or something, uh, I'll send you I'll send you a message like. I, is email all right for you, or do you prefer like social media? I or think uh, email is good, just in case it gets lost. Um, like with email, it's like nicely organized, so just in case like I might miss it immediately, like I'm not gonna like lose it in the in the social media stream. Okay. Yeah. Sh sure. I'll probably send you like say if if since it's gonna be difficult for us to have another lesson, or like at least in the next month or so. I'll probably send, like, I could send you footage and you can give me, like, short notes or something. Yeah, and I can I'll, do that. Like, and I'll send you, like, thoughts that I have or whatever, if that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That sounds good. Okay. Awesome. Uh, sorry, or I'll, I'll talk to you later and hope to get you an article for Commentator's Curse. All right, sounds good. All right, see you tomorrow. Right, see you, Tal.